Morning Boss Talk. Topic today, respect your craft. Last week, I ended off talking about not chasing other people's success and that you wouldn't be able to duplicate their success because you're not bringing the same energy to them if you're somebody that's just jumping from lane to lane and you don't really love what you're trying to do. But I want to push it a little further today with the topic of respect your craft. KRS-1 once said, rap is what we do. Hip hop is what we live. And in that era, you know, hip hop was based on nine different elements. Some of them got taken away later on by white corporations because it was all about community stuff. But that's a whole nother topic. So it's nine elements. In order for you to be an MC in that era, you got to embrace the whole culture. You can't just be a rapper. It has to be in you. The culture has to be in you. You have to know everything about it before you can actually be an MC. But outside of rap, do you embrace everything about your craft? Do you know everything about your craft? Do you respect your craft? Uh, a lot of us try to figure out why we can't be successful, why we keep hitting brick walls, and why we can't get things to go like we want, when the fact of the matter is we just not respecting our craft enough to make ourselves in this lane be so good that success comes towards us. The Bible says a man gifts make room for him. So if you make your gift good, then room is going to be made for you. You ain't got to do none of this chasing, no cosign and stuff. You ain't got to do none of these antics. Your gift is going to make room for you, but that's only if you respect your gift enough to work on your gift. We got too many people out here that's just half ass in everything that they do. They, they just not going hard and they expecting somehow just because they got a certain amount of followers that you're going to be successful or that you're going to get some notoriety or that you're going to be able to create some change when you yourself are not respecting your craft. But give you four things that you got to do or four questions to ask yourself uh, regarding respecting your craft. Firstly, do you know the history of your craft? Who are the founders? How did it start? Why did they start? What what was going on that made this lane, this gift, this talent, this talent created? Do you know everything you need to know about the craft? See, folks jump in the lane doing something and don't know none of the history around it. If you don't know the the root of what you're trying to do, if you haven't watched how it's evolved, watch the people that were in the beginning, in the middle, people that are doing it currently. If you haven't learned everything from, from point A to where you are today, you're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff wrong, just doing stuff out of your own mind. And instead of researching and studying and seeing how this thing is supposed to be done. Now, I'm not saying that we got to do things like people did in the old days the whole time, but you do have to study it because it's a reason why they did what they did. It's a reason why they created certain foundations. It's a reason why they created certain standards. It's a reason why they created certain ways to do stuff because they understood that we. this is how we preserve it. Then you come right in and you don't want to preserve the craft and you just mess the craft all up. So first thing is, do you know the history of your craft? The second thing is, what are your aspirations for your craft? Do you want to be the best that you can be? Too many folks are literally just okay with mediocrity. They don't want to work on nothing to be their best. As long as they can be okay with it, they, they, they like kids that just okay with a D. I passed though. No. What are your aspirations for your craft? Do you really want to do this thing at the best level that you can? I ain't talking about in comparison to other people being better than this person, this man, or this woman. I'm talking about do you within your craft every day want to be better than you were yesterday? Do you know the history of your craft? What are your aspirations for your craft? Then what do you want to bring to your craft? And I said, I'm not saying that we got to do stuff like they always did. We got to evolve it, but what do you want to do to evolve the craft? What are you working on to make the craft better? That is going to be better for the next generation that come after you. See, when you, when you know your history, when, when you are working on your craft, you want to be your best. And, and, and when you want to evolve the craft, bring something to the craft, it's no way you can be successful because now you, you taking this thing to a whole nother level. You exposing it to a whole nother demographic of people, but 
that only happens when you respect your craft. Don't stop BSing with your craft. Then the, then the last thing is real simple. How much do you work on your craft? How much do you work on your craft? I'm a speaker. Now, obviously, we people just talk. We talk all the time. But I'm, I've am i been speaking for years. I took as many free engagements as I could. I'd be in the house in the mirror. <laughs> I'd be walking around in the house speaking. Like, that's how I get my stuff together. I'm, I pace. I pace back and forth. And I just be in the house. And I just be talking. I just be talking. I just be working on my craft. Working on how I'm going to present it. Working on how I'm going to move. See, this thing is uh, it's, it's more than just talking. Now, see, right here is it, 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 different. But when you're in front of a crowd, you're in front of a crowd of 500 people, 1,000 people, you got to hold people's energy. So you have to know when to be calm when you're talking because you want to get a certain thing across. You also have to know when you need to project your voice on certain things so people will grab it and, and, and stop and pay attention. You need to know where to look in certain times. Make sure you got your crowd's uh, um, um, eyes. Make sure they're watching you. Make sure you're having contact with them so they can feel you. They can feel your energy when you feel their energy and you feel like you got to get a little more amp so you can amp them up or you feel the energy and you got to tone it down a little bit. This but you only learn that from practicing your craft. You don't think that you can just get up on a stage and just speak like a professional speaker just because you talk all day. No, this stuff is worked on. It's a whole science to it. Do you know the history of your craft? What are your aspirations for your craft? What do you want to bring to the craft? And how much do you practice it? Respect your craft. If you respect your craft, your craft is going to take care of you. Now, understand, I ain't saying that success is immediate because we got to get out of that. The social media age of just wanting things instantly. Sometimes it's going to take some time, especially if you got some integrity. But if you do it right, it's going to last long and you'll have an honorable legacy. But you got to respect your craft. Remember, y'all, boss up. The rules of being a boss dropping May 17th and make sure y'all stop by bfrankuma.com right now and pick up something off the website and as always I love y'all by the way I got a new cut I'm looking handsome too <laughs>